I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. Okay, we have no remote participants. We do have a quorum of the board, so we're going to get started with reopening a uh, continuation of the public hearing for proposed site plan SP3-17 at 346 Washington Street for operations of Smith & Sons, a company engaged in construction, ex excavating, and mulch processing and sale, including two new buildings of 22,800 total square feet. The public hearing being continued from December 18, 2017 to January 22, 2018. I will note for the record that in the meantime, we... Um, it's just a longer version, but... But we've already opened it. Yeah. Okay, right? Um, in the meantime, we have, um, oh, you need that? Okay. In the meantime, three members of the board were able to go on a site visit to 346 Washington Street. Could you please speak up? I, I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. In addition, I'll try. Um, I mean, we, we do our best to make these meetings accessible to the public. We don't have fancy equipment. I mean, what the law requires is that we have a meeting that's open to the public, um, and the amount of participation depends on what we can effectively do during a meeting. Um, the three members of the board did go on a site visit of 346 Washington Street as well as to review the operations at Copeland Lumber, behind Copeland Lumber in Marshfield, on Route 139 on Plain Street in Marshfield. We did that last Monday. Um, in the meantime, we have here in our packages a letter from Attorney Watsky that was sent today at 12.52 in the afternoon. Um, I would ask that it, with the permission of the board, rather than reading it into the, into the record, um, that we will ask to have it included with the minutes of the meeting. Um, this, in this letter, Attorney Watsky does inform us that he won't be here tonight. He knows that his client would be here tonight. Um, he, his objection was to the fact that there were not yet any noise or odor um, reviews that were going to be available tonight for us to discuss, but I'll get to in a minute that that may have changed from the applicant's perspective. Yeah, and, he, and he's aware of that because I spoke to him last Wednesday and told him that we were, Changing. Not, we were not going to be conducting any grinding at all on the site, Okay. Uh, other than just to clean it up. So okay. So. Okay. Um, and then we also have a letter here signed by I'll do my best. Donald and Danielle Markell of 40, 416 Washington Street. James Bridgewater and Arthur Rubin from 8 Pleasant Street. Maureen Robinson of 31 Pleasant Street. Ronald Robinson of 31 Pleasant Street. The, the, the residents of 15 Pleasant Street, but I can't read the signatures. Paula DeMello of 14 Washington Street, Maria Karras of 400 Washington Street, John of 55 Pleasant Street, I can't read the name, Carlos Erozzo of 61 Pleasant Street, and a resident of 2 Pleasant Street. 
this letter is um, concerned with the uh, whether the operations proposed by Smith and Sons will be injurious, noxious, offensive to the neighborhood, um, and that the proposed use would not be considered light industry. Again, with the permission of the board, I would suggest everyone has everyone on the board has a copy of it. We can put it in the public record and attach it to the minutes. We also have a letter dated February 5th with a court opinion attached from David Norman of 15 Pleasant Street. I see Mr. Norman's here again tonight. Um, and this letter is also in all of the board members' packets. And it is concerned with impact standards, um, wood grinding being industrial and not related, not allowed as ancillary to retail sale of mulch, and um, making the argument that it does not meet the agricultural exemption because wood chipping or grinding is not forestry or lumbering. Um, Mr. Norman also raises questions regarding notice requirements because of the amendment of the site plan, um, raises questions with the site plan and potential deficiencies, um, makes the argument that there may be a common driveway, and, and uh, makes the argument that because the applicant is not yet a current owner, it wouldn't be um, a hardship for the um, if it were denied or modified um, to limit the use. Again, I understand that um, Mr. Norman has asked us to um, include the letter in the record, and we will do that as well. We also have a letter from attorney Bob Galvin, who is with us tonight as well, saying that as um, this is significant, as a concession to the neighborhood, Mr. Smith has agreed to a proposed condition that restricts him from using the grinder as part of his ongoing operation, and that um, he would need to use the grinder to clean up, to do the site cleanup to clean up the stumps and material that would be required for anyone building at that site. Um, they take the position that there will be no new materials brought onto the site for processing, although they maintain that the uses are exempt from zoning. They believe that the, the there was they did do a noise study that would indicate that the the grinder could be sufficiently mitigated, but the cost to mitigate that sound would not be justified because of the um, price of the property and other financial con considerations in order to put in the sound buffering would be too expensive <coughs> to make it make sense. Um, so that's why we don't have a noise study, because they're going to take away that use. Um, we also have a letter here that Mr. Galvin received today from the Massachusetts Forestry Alliance's elect executive director uh, regarding the law on the use of lumbering operations as uh, a farming use. So we also have a schedule here to consider where Mr. Smith would propose to screen loam which is an activity that he's currently engaged in at the Mattachusett Street property in Town Center, which has immediate residential abutters, closer res residential abutters. The screener utilizes only a 100 horsepower engine instead of a 1,050 horsepower engine that the grinder has a 10 times bigger engine. Um, does not make the type of noise that the grinder makes and is used to create loam from soil and biodegraded <coughs> wood. Correct. Um, and he would intend to sell the screen loam as his product and other types of materials that are manufactured elsewhere would be sold. The screening activities are only proposed on Mondays to Friday, 7.30 to 4.30 to minimize um, early or late or weekend impacts. And as a further 
gesture to reduce noise impacts, all of the vehicles and equipment will be required to be equipped with smart white noise backup alarms, which is a proprietary backup alarm manufactured by Brigade Electronics, which automatically adjusts the volume of backup alarms to 5 to 10 decibels above ambient noise, which is the DEP standard for noise pollution. There would be regular operations of 6 to 8, Monday to Friday, and 7.30 to 4.30 on Saturdays, and pickups and deliveries only on Sundays and holidays. Um, Did you say 6 to 8? That, that's not for any type of, that, that's just where a customer can come in or the employees can come in and get ready for the day. But it, um, the screening activities would only be Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 4.30. So this is in um, Attorney Galvin's letter that's in your packet, Paul. Yeah. The last page of his letter. The grinding is on the first page. Actually, it's both pages. All right, so all of these including we have an updated um, site plan review, peer review for Merrill engineers that was prepared by Peter Palmieri, our engineer, the town's engineer consultant, which I have not had time to review. I don't know if any other members of the board have had time to review this yet. <coughs> Anybody else want to speak to it? We want to take five minutes to look at it? No. So Peter, what I'm saying is that you raise questions for the that it's for the board's determination as to whether the proposed uses meet the zoning requirements. Sure. That the landscape plan we would need to determine whether it's satisfactory, and that the um, additional soil testing would be required after the ground is not frozen. Well, then and that could be a condition. Additional soil testing that's up to the board. Um, it's in the area of the uh, infiltration basin number three, which is probably the southerly most basin. So if I'm look, if I'm on, it's probably almost like behind the fire station. Okay. Okay. That's up to the board, but it, it should be done. It's a matter of when. Okay. Um. And then they did request a waiver of the Caribbean at the entrance. Although you note that this is going to be a mass, maybe a well, mass maybe. VO2 question. Yeah. Well, the curbing, the requirement for curbing is up to the board. If they have to reconstruct the entrance, it may trigger a mass highway um, VO2 permit. Which would require curbing? Um, not necessarily. Not no. necessarily. No. The, okay. the curbing question is up to the board. Is really up to us. Correct. Okay. And that's just the that's the only waiver they requested. Yeah, that's the only waiver I've seen. Um, so, we also have a letter dated January 24 on a peer review <coughs> on behalf of the Pembroke Conservation Commission of the wetlands area. So, Matthew, can we include all of this as um, part of the record for tonight's meeting? All of these? Yeah, just append it to the minutes. Yeah. And this is basically just the delineation of the wetlands on the property. Yeah. yeah. 
and <coughs> which you also have in your plans, I would presume. And which the Conservation Commission will also be reviewing. This is just right. part of what's been given to us. So, um, a lot of changes. One of the questions I wanted to sort of bring up at the beginning is a kind of a procedural question. We have um, site plan approval deadline right now is February 20th. We obviously have a lot of new information before the board tonight. If we are not able to reach agreement, have you guys discussed doing an extension? We'll do an extension. Okay. All right. So, do you guys have questions? Do we want to start with the applicant explaining the change in use? Well, I just have one question. Uh, I wasn't able to be at the uh, the site walk, mm -hmm. but uh, did you see grinding in process? We so, did. And I know that's not going to be relevant now because you you've decided not to do grinding at this. Well, location, let's put it this correct? way. I think the I think the way to look at this is that after walking that site, and I've known this board this is my twentieth year. Um, you know, we can say it doesn't need to be, it needs to be cleaned up. Someone's going to have to clean it up. It is a lot of wood product that has been buried <coughs> that one way or another is going to have to be dealt with. Um, I don't necessarily, in this business, his business being set up there as a grinding business, uh, or have that machine sitting there. But there's going to have to be a machine in there to clean it up, whether it's this applicant or someone else. And the question is, does <clears throat> keeping that site the way it is enhance your property, or does it take, a, take away value from your property? Because a lot of people in town will always say it's contaminated because of the way it is, the way that that property is. And when you walk it, it's very disturbing to see what was done and how the land has been mis mistreated. And someone's going to have to spend an awful lot of money to clean it up. So, and someone's going to have to use heavy equipment to clean it up. Just from getting up on top of the mounds of material that are there. But ultimately, <clears throat> when you get up onto the site and you look at it, it can be a beautiful piece of property if someone takes the time to clean it up. And it's not going to be very cheap to do. And you may have the right applicant here to do it, but it, there will be noise. But I'm not saying that I want the end result of the applicant to have that as a, a place to grind permanently. But I do think whatever ever goes there, whether it's this applicant or, or someone else to come in there, there's going to have to be heavy equipment in there cleaning it up. But that's just for the cleanup. It wouldn't be that, an ongoing but that grinding could, operation. That could take, it could take a year. It could take longer. Oh. Just because of the size of the property and how much, can, how much wood material is into that ground. I, I mean, no. it was pretty... The, the land itself right now is very disheveled, I would say. You have the 346 right now, if you go there, you're kind of walking through, it goes up, it goes down, it has mounds of messy soil with sticks and rocks and things coming out of it. You'll step and you're logs. avoiding little holes and logs and it, it's not an easy site. When, when the town had talked about that site for the fire station, everyone said, oh, it's too contaminated, the town can't touch it. So I do agree with Paul that there is a perception that the that the land there is contaminated, which I don't think particularly helps the town or the surround or the abutters. Um, <coughs> I mean, I would hope and expect that as a town we would like to see that site cleaned up and made use of. I think it's a big concession that we're seeing tonight that I was not aware of until I sat down tonight, <coughs> that they're not going to do grinding there long term, that this is just going to be part of the cleanup operation rather than part of the long term use. Um, I, I tend to think it would be a big benefit to have that land cleaned up at some point so that nobody, my understanding is that they've done a lot of soil testing, have found no actual signs of contamination. 
So that's the good news for everyone. There's no existing evidence that anybody left anything on that property that's leaching into the soil and creating a toxic condition. That's good news, right? For all of us, that we don't have a... a I was going to say, ironically, the, uh, the piece of land that the town did buy has buried oil tanks. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes sense. <laughs> I was there comment. But, um, so, so cleaning up that land, I agree with Paul, would be an asset to the town to have right. that mm. big of a piece of land. It's, when you go onto the property, it is a very, very large piece of land. We don't typically have many pieces of land that are that big that we go on to that are that clear at least. I mean, I guess if we're going into a <coughs> subdivision, the land's probably that big, but it's all filled with trees. Mm -hmm. So we don't typically go into a property that has that much open space. Um, when I actually got on top of the, there's multiple mounds. He got to the top, I, I didn't. And when you walk behind uh, uh, your house, um, you're probably 15 feet up above where the actual uh, level property is. And it runs for quite a bit. And, and surprisingly, there's multiple like barriers or walls of this material. And on the back side of it, it's almost built like, like it's a, uh, a hollow. Like he tried to build walls around the, the perimeter and he pushed logs towards uh, what used to be uh, uh, the bonsai place. Uh, he sort of like stacked up all types of material on that end of the property. And as you go to the back, uh, there's, a, there's a stream that's back there, and like a dike. And you walk over that, and that, that's all filled with wood, wood products that have been buried and, and tried to create some type of wall, uh, sound barrier is probably what he was trying to do. I don't, I don't know what he was doing on that property. I don't think many people do. Uh, but it's going to take quite a bit of money, I think, to, to clean it up the, the way it should be. Um, so, I, I mean, in one aspect, we don't want to see, you wouldn't want to see this type of, uh, of business there. But in the other aspect, it may not be, it may be beneficial as long as the grinding's not there. Um, between that material being, being uh, cleaned up, that wood product being taken out and maybe some type of <coughs> barriers with uh, trees on it could help increase the value of those properties and the noise may not be that bad. And the walk we had over in Marshfield, we didn't see the grinder actually grinding stumps. We saw the grinder, uh, listen to the grinder grinding mulch, which I think is not the same. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that when the when logs go in there, there's a different ramp uh, RPMs that the equipment's running at to take and grind it. Um, but the stocking equipment, the part that would would elevate a wood product to a higher level, uh, is just basically a, a conveyor. And that seemed to be fairly quiet. Um, so I, I wouldn't have a problem with a stacker, but I would have a problem with a grinder being there as a permanent operation. Uh, any, uh, is after the cleanup, of the property, we could put into the order that there wouldn't be any grinding allowed on that property at all, and and also that it would <coughs> this use would only go not go with the property but go with the owner of the property, so it couldn't be sold off as a a business that ground uh, stored material in unless they came with it came back to this board. But that's kind of how I would look at it. I, I concur, Paul. The, the two issues that I see, uh, one, that Mr. Smith has agreed not to grind outside of doing cleanup. And the second issue is the silent alarms on the equipment. I think that's important. Uh, the operation of the, of the equipment should not be that obnoxious with the barriers that are going to be in place. Do we have any um, information on what those barriers are going to be? 
Should we take a look at the plan and see what that? What do you mean the barriers? The the the, the barriers around the property. There's going to be a, there's going to be a mound. Uh, so sort of what's there? But yeah, and it's going to be it's going to be built up with with trees. Is that true long term? Yeah. yeah. Do you have that on the plan that we can yeah, take a look at it? Okay. You know, I, you guys had actually been nice enough to bring us smaller versions of the plan, and I left them at home. So, proposing up landscape barrier in this location here, Ms. Karras's house is here. Um, the working area is really here. This is more storage and accessibility everywhere else. Um, there's also existing mounding that's going to remain along the edge of the wetland here. We're going to leave some of that up. Um, so we can only work so close to the wetland anyway. Yeah, and where would the screening operation be? Still up rear. Yeah, probably over the Okay. Yeah. Back rear. Keeping it in, as in the where, where the grinding would have otherwise yeah. taken place. Correct. Keeping it as far away from the budding properties as possible. Right. Correct. And that's kind of how it's laid out anyway. The buildings are here. The most open space is to the back. The closest to the butter is here. And during the, the cleanup, how would the cleanup happen? Would it start by cleaning up this front area and building the building? Over, you know, uh, would it attack each component at, you know what I mean, at like we would a normal site job. But I assume you would want to clean up the site where you're going to build, and right. then you could build and finish it's cleaning up. Exactly, you kind of work our way up that. So it's building, be building first, and then front yeah. building first, and then work your way. And the grinder will have to kind of follow the cleanup process, because I take it, because I don't know. Are you, are you going to move the material to the grinder that's no, going to be stationed somewhere? You got to take it. Yeah. process it would be more take the grinder to the product. You got that's what I was thinking. Me, me with yeah. the it's not like we're right. setting up a site as a recycled site anymore. We're just cleaning up the site so then do it the past as well. The only it, thing, it, it, the only it, thing it, I would say is where that second building is located yeah. seems to be that's going to be a hard area to clean. As we walk down through there that's where a lot of build up of logs that have been buried and, and, and right in there is Something that's going to have to be looked at real closely because of the soils, and you don't know the depth. Mm -hmm. With dug yeah. test holes, it's it's varied, and that's probably one of the deeper areas where it's ten to, ten to thirteen feet till you get to uh, something solid. Yes, and yeah. you have to get to something solid to build because yeah, no so matter who builds, you can't build on. Correct, because when the biodegrade seal gets settling and the building will fall. Yep. Yeah, but how many yards of material do you anticipate? Yeah, I have not done the calculation. I, I, I haven't either. I just well, how many yards going out and how many going in? Well, <laughs> well it's, no, so it's, thinking it's, about it's how much it's mixed. Be it's mixed in. He'll be able to utilize uh, okay. a so lot of the material. He's going right. to sift through and take out the organics, the woods, yeah. and stone, then, <coughs> yeah. concrete. Yep, and they'll they'll sort it and uh, you know yeah. compact it where they need to and put it back when it's but even when but it's even properly like you were talking about on the back side there. As we walk through that material, I'm assuming that the conservation um, board would give grant permission to work in there to clean it up, uh, just because of the what's out there, and get it away from that stream, and then uh, make it restored. Restored, correct? Because it is, it's it's not it's not a pleasant to look at. In fact, as you come down the other end towards the down in there, correct? Yeah. Where the, you have another layer of a mound of material that's there, and it's all mixed uh, wood products and, and stuff that needs to be addressed. Um, it's quite a quite a mess of site. The surveying it was uh, treacherous. <laughs> well, there were parts of the site that I just couldn't. I mean, right. Paul Paul went to parts of the site that I just couldn't go to. Plus, there, there's some questionable wetland. Parcels and I think are isolated wetland um, yep. that hasn't been delineated yet. Um, so the uh, I think you're referring to an area that was delineated that the commission found was non-jurisdictional. So they're gonna um, allow that to be filled. Correct. Yep. Because it's uh, fill. 
you know, it's all on felt. Can you tell us exactly what you point to? Because we have no clue. Like, where's the, where's Washington Street? Okay. And where Washington Street's out here. Okay, and where's Pleasant Street? Could you, could you direct your comments to me as the chair? Because okay. this is a meeting that the planning board is having, and you're guests at our meeting, but yes. ultimately we're the people who need to decide, and so you have to direct your comments to me, okay? okay I will. I'm sorry. Okay. I just was, you mean... So, Maureen, you would be to so, the left. So we could, so we could know what he's talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. We have no clue what he's talking about, where he's pointing to. Okay, so Pleasant Street is that line going up? Pleasant Street's way out over here. Okay. How, how many okay. feet, Kevin, has to be? I thought we had a thousand feet from the boundary line yeah. of the property. Yeah. And there is, there is a stream there behind my house, behind, right. the, behind all yeah. our houses. Yeah. And then there's another one that actually comes down the back side of that <coughs> and interconnects to it. <coughs> And there's a walking dike, it appears, that, yeah. that's up there. And that looked, the dike looked in great shape. It's solid, yeah. Do you so, have any questions, Dean? Well, I'm just going to go back to the entrance, but... <clears throat> what do you mean, the curb cut? Yeah, I was just uh, trying to figure out how, how wide that's going to be. And there, isn't there like a phone pole in the middle of it, or is that... Yeah, that's yep. why there's an island. So is okay. that staying? That's staying there, yeah. right? Yeah. Basically, we're going to reuse the existing entrance the way it is. Okay. Um, Peter Calamari pointed out he thought maybe that this radius might be a little tight, so we are looking to smooth that out and make a 40-foot radius. There is truck C uses here, so the easier turns we can have, the better circulation and on and off the uh, Route 53 there. Okay. Um, so going north, we can get into the site in this one-way lane. Exiting, we can go left and right. So this radius is 30 feet. We've got to go across the way, so we don't need such a hard turn because we have that room to maneuver. This side, we bumped it up to 40 so that we can <coughs> get out. Um, good, bad weather, you name it. Andy? Look. Questions? Uh, the only other question about the um, um, the soil work um, that will be ongoing there. Screening of the, the screening of the loam, correct? Yeah. Were you guys able to hear any of that when you did your site walk, or have any approximation of what that no, sounds but, like? No, but they screen up in the center. Okay. Uh, and so we haven't heard any complaints from neighbors in the center from that. And that's could be from the hours in which they operate it. Could be a lot of different things. But we'll have to maybe we can get some information on when we, you do we screen. Can, we can kind of describe the screening operation for you too. It, it's radically different from the grinding operation. Right. The machine is has, has a horsepower that's as was indicated by Ms. Coletta that one tenth of the power of the um, of the grinder. Plus, it's fundamentally a different operation. Right. For You're sure. not grinding up wood. Right. So, which makes a lot of noise. So, could, could I just maybe say yeah, a few words? Yeah. Go ahead. So, um, <coughs> we did do the noise study, and at the boundary line of our property, we would have to demonstrate that we're not increasing the ambient noise level more than uh, ten decibels. Mm -hmm. That's the DEP noise standard. Mm -hmm. um, Without any type of mitigation there at that distance, our study told us that we would be about 12, per 12 decibels. So we're only just a couple of points over. And the to reduce that down and make it 10%, we would have to resort to some pretty significant means, including the size size of the of the buffer, the the mound, probably landscaping, fencing, and at some point it becomes cost prohibitive. It, it actually made more sense because he could continue to grind in Marshfield at his location, uh, and I think it would be more beneficial to the neighbors to do that. So that was a concession that Dan made. We will not, we will not engage in that on an ongoing basis. 
simply to clean up the site. Um, we could do it. It was physically possible and, and technologically possible to be out of that standard, but um, that would be the activity that would trigger, not the screening of the loan. The screening of the loan, basically, you take the soil material, you can describe it in if you want, but um, it is a, it's a radically different operation. And not only did were there no complaints, but there were people that were neighbors that came in and said to the board last time that it's never been a problem where they are. So, um, and in order to assure the neighbors that their leisure time wouldn't be impacted, um, as I indicated in the letter, that we would never screen at all on the weekends. We would only screen during the week, and we would screen with limited hours. And I actually have a schedule that's an annual schedule that we would adhere to. The, with as multiple other days, including holidays and non-holidays, that we would not seek to screen. Um, I'm sure it's every holiday and multiple times around July 4th, things like that. So that's the first thing. That is. But I, w I wanted to make it pretty clear to you also that, uh, as I indicated in the first time, the first meeting, um, I did consult with the uh, Forestry Alliance, which is a um, a nonprofit organization that supports lumbermen and those types of organizations. And they, they believe, and it's their position, and the gentleman that wrote the letter, Nathan LeJoy, um, he's a former commissioner of the Department of Agriculture. He's also the gentleman that wrote the statute that we're talking about and is an expert in agricultural and lumbering operations. And they take the view that lumbering includes the act of cutting, preparing mar for market all types of forest products. Not only do they take the view that Tian's operation would be agricultural, they take the position that it doesn't even the product doesn't even have to be raised or grown on this property in any portion of it, because the definition of agriculture there, and I cited it in my letter, actually talks about any street, any forestry or lumbering operations performed by a farmer. And it doesn't have to be incidental to farming operations on the same property. And that was something that I wasn't even aware of, but he made it very clear, and that's why he wrote the letter. But notwithstanding that, we are now <coughs> proposing to do this type of an operation because of the potential impact to the neighbors. So, um, so I gave you that and his opinion there. Um, I indicated about the screen, uh, the screener, which is radically different. Um, I indicated about the smart backup noise alarms that you've already um, mentioned. Um, again, but the, these alarms automatically adjust the backup volume of the alarms to 5 to 10 decibels, which would be below the noise pollution standards. There's nobody else that's doing that. When the school buses in town back out of their lot, they probably have decibels that are multiple more than that. Uh, and then in terms of the regular business operations, it would be 6 a.m. to Monday to Friday, uh, but that's not the screening time. 7.30 to 4.30 on Saturdays, and pickup and deliveries only on Sundays and holidays. So, I mean, if you wanted to come in and you want to buy a product that was the mulch that was manufactured anyway, you can come in on the weekends and get some mulch. Um, so and that's just, the type of... And just to be clear, no screening on the weekends? No screening at all on the weekends. And these are all conditions that we're proposing. So uh, just a couple of other words. Um, I, last week on Wednesday, I did speak with Attorney Watsky. Um, I told him that of, of Dan's decision that we would not be grinding on the property, and I was looking for a little bit of feedback from him as to what his clients thought. I didn't hear that back. Um, so when I saw his letter today and it didn't mention the fact that we had made that gesture, I was a little bit surprised because I told him that we weren't going to be doing that and weren't going forward with the noise expert. But, in any event, uh, we do think that we have an op operation that actually fits in this neighborhood. We, as conditioned, we think it will not be harmful or injurious to the neighborhood, and hopefully people will be happy to see it cleaned up and looking as it does and operated the way Dan expects it will be operated. I did see Mr. Norman's letter, and I appreciate all the hard work he put into it. Um, I think that uh, they're all rightfully concerned about the impacts to the neighborhood. Dan is too. If he's not going to be a good neighbor, he's not going to be well received, and people aren't going to use him or recommend him. So his reputation here is the most important thing to him, and that's why they try, try to work with you rather than uh, try
try to, to fit the square peg into a round hole. Um, the impact standards that were cited, uh, uh, certainly we think now we have an operation that will meet or uh, meet all the impact standards, most particularly with regard to noise. There aren't odors associated with this other than the ordinary storage of mulch, which does have some odor, but it's not um, uh, something that we think wouldn't dissipate by the time it reached any boundary line of the property. Um, the case that Mr. Norman cited was the Uxbridge case. That was a case where uh, there was an, uh, a family that was running their dirt bikes on private property, and that was offensive to the neighborhood. Uh, we can certainly understand why that would be the case. In terms of the common driveway, this is an argument that we've heard before, that there is no common driveway. This is one lot taxed as two assessor's parcels. But it's one lot. There is no common driveway here at all. It will be deeded to one owner. It's in one owner right now. It, it will is. be deeded to one owner. We're okay. not proposing to divide it up. It's just taxed for two, as two lots, but it's technically one legal lot, okay, with one frontage. Mm -hmm. One rear, one side, uh, and two sides. That's that's all this is right now. So we're not proposing to go over anybody else's property to get to our property. We're proposing to come in over our frontage, all of which is required under the bylaws. Um, and it's not just to be clear. Yeah. There are no separate deeds per parcel. It's one no. deed for both parcels. One deed, common ownership. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not even common ownership. It's single ownership. Yeah. Correct. Uh, so that that certainly doesn't apply. Uh, you know, Dan lives in town, his business is going to be here, he wants to work with the neighbors to try to do the right thing here, um, and he thinks he can do it better or else he would have quit a long time ago. Well, I will say that the, we, in town center, which is a very tight area, with the current operations, we have not really gotten a lot of complaints um, that I'm aware of. Um, okay, we'll open, if the applicant yep. has spoken, the board has spoken, we'll open it up to comments from the public. Okay, Ms. Harris. Just again, just for the record, because it'll go on, even though I know who you are, the, the audio tape won't see you. Maria Karras, 400 Washington Street. Um, to answer why um, Attorney Watsky did not reply um, he called me, I was at work, and when he told me that they were proposing about taking the grinder, mm -hmm. they, that was just a verbal thing. Mm -hmm. And still, like, I, I don't see clearly any, any sign here of any of the changes that they say verbally. So, Can I respond site, to that just yeah. real quick? So what they're proposing, when we do a site plan review, if we approve a site plan, we, do, we approve a site plan with conditions. Those conditions are included in the same document that the site plan review is in. So they're proposing that the board would actually adopt written conditions if we approved a site plan that would say they can't operate outside of these hours, they can't operate a grinder past the cleanup stage, and they, you know, they have it, they can't do loam operations outside of the time. So these what they've put in writing to us would be in a written decision by the board if we grant the site plan approval, just to be and, clear. And we can limit how long it's going to take to clean up the property. But my answer to my attorney was, and what I heard from you guys, and I appreciate taking the time to explain, it seemed to me, my perception, is that the planning board elected a, a people tried to persuade us of something that we do not want. And what I heard you say, and I don't mean no be disrespect mm -hmm. by any means, was I, I I'm okay with the grind uh, with the grinder not being there, but with this being there, we're the one leaving there. So bear with me one second, so I can ex okay. probably express all of my concerns. Mm -hmm. Several times from the first meeting when I came and I took time from, from work and family and everything else was it was not just about the grinder. And that's what I told Mr. Watsky. He tried to convince me otherwise too. And I say, Mr. Watsky, if you lived behind that property and you were affected and you were a direct abutter, you would not be trying to convince me to just because of the grinder is removed. There's just beyond that. And I think that not just me, but several, as you saw the signatures there, we're all on the same page. There's traffic. The traffic study that they presented is not really detailed to the impact 
And I have another letter, but I needed to first um, make sure that I hear their comments to be able to come back to you guys, and hopefully I get the opportunity to do that. The uh, damage that is going to be done on, on the pavement is one full loaded truck equals, I was researching all of this, about 9,000 cars. This is money from taxpayers that we have to maintain that road so Mr. Smith does a, a, um, opens a business there. That's one. Two, there's also the odor factor. Somebody said it's not that bad. Really? When you have to live there? If you go on the internet and you just do simple Google, <coughs> you're going to find pages of pages of cases of lawsuits. So they have one. Uh, abutters and neighbors of different cases where people have won because the order was people wanted to vomit and when we met all as as neighbors they they couldn't stand it and they don't want to live um, the summer times with the windows closed that's unfair to us so our concerns are not just the grinder which I surely appreciate um, but it's not a compromise here whether we want um, smell versus noise. Yeah, the noise, it, it will be unbearable. It's an obvious case that, that, that it was the biggest part of the whole operation. But there is this audit. If you research it, there's also health issues with small particles where people develop allergies and asthma and the, the kids are affected as well. So I think it's beyond that. And when um, Ms. Coletta says about there's a reason because they took the grinder and we don't have a noise study. Well, I would like to know, one, how many trucks are going to be there? And if every single one of them it has 5 to 10 decibels, how does that accumulate if you have 10 of those trucks operating at the same time? Is it the same? So it would be nice if we had the noise study so people can actually be more educated. Um, the screener, is there, I would like to know, is there one screener for long or there 10? So, because in my mind is okay, so if one equals 100 um, horsepower, then 10 of those, it will be equal 1,000, which is equal, equivalent to the grinder. So more detail, and I think that it's unfair to us to come Monday after Monday. I know I appreciate the extension, but this is last minute, including the letter, and including and, and our no letter. <laughs> and so it's hard for us to really know what we, what we face in. And we want to be, like Noreen said, to be knowledgeable to know. It would be nice to be, to trust. But it's hard for us to trust when, one, things got dumped in there. And like I put in my letter and I sent an email to the uh, Board of Selectmen to help us with this. We have reached out to the Army Corps of Engineer. We have reached out to the DEP because it, it seems like we're talking to deaf ears. Hey, there's something, the building inspector has not been notified that they, the uh, letter that um, the conservation peer review submitted, it says how they already bury some of the stuff with the new soil that they put in there. So the little things that I've seen, I don't really trust that somebody's gonna come in and be a good neighbor when they're not starting right from the first time. Then the mulch, I was waiting to see if it was going to go away and it was just a screening of lawn. What is screening of lawn? I, is, is it gonna be dirty stuff that is gonna come in? And, and, and to me, I guess last, I don't wanna um, take over the whole meeting and I appreciate the time. It is kind of fair that the town allowed, not you guys, but apparently the town allowed um, chip tech to make a mess out of it. And then we are going to, and I think that you guys are concerned about the cleaning. Somebody has to clean it. I'm a real estate agent too. I'll bring you a lot of people that want to um, build some 55 plus beautiful community there that would not be in any way um, disturbing the neighbors, if it's possible. But is it really because the town now, why can't, and somebody said it in the last meeting, why isn't the town making the property owner and I'm sure that Army Corps or whoever has jurisdiction over the, some of the wetlands there will make them clean that up. It doesn't have to be at the sacrifice of the neighbors. Well, a few things, I mean, that I can speak to, and then I'll let the applicants speak to some of them. I mean, keep in mind, we're volunteers, too. Yeah. So when you guys are taking oh. every Monday night to come, we are, too. Um, so I appreciate it, and I hope you appreciate our role, too, is volunteers. No one pays us. We were elected, we put ourselves out there, and we do this for five years. So we're doing the, the best we can. And during the day. And, and during, during the day. And during the day. So we're doing <laughs> the best we can. We're not doing this for, you know, 
I, no one pays me to do this. Can, can I say something else? Yes. So look at what happened just now. Maureen spoke earlier and you put her in her place. I'm just saying how unfair in the perception of certain things. He speaks and he's okay to say that because he's on your side. So to there us, it's like, I will just volunteer to there's, be a there's no, there's no sides. There's, there's no sides here. No, I've had applicants that I've argued but with. It, it, it should be fair to everybody. And for you guys to keep in mind that we expect the same treatment that you guys give Smith that we, and we did too. I know about volunteering, just volunteered the, uh, um, to the advisory board. We appreciate it, and that has nothing to do with it. We want you guys to fill our shoes too, and not to punish us because of the town um, failure to make sure that that was clean and properly done, and it should not be our, our, and on our expense. But, Ms. Harris, I would ask you, in the same way I would ask yeah. you, I'm speaking to you the same way I would speak to an applicant. If Mr. Galvin makes a point that I don't agree with, I will challenge Mr. Galvin. I'm an attorney as well as a realtor and the chairman of this board for a year. We tend to do it around so it's not like anybody becomes the chair for life. Um, and I would challenge anybody. I don't, I don't really, my job is to try to get to the best result for the town. So I'm not speaking to you in a certain way or putting you in your place because you're a member of the public versus an applicant. If Mr. Smith spoke in a way that <coughs> I didn't agree with, I would, I would do the same. And other members of the board are free to try to shut me up as well. We're, we're just all doing the best we can to have a conversation about a difficult topic. We have a piece of land that I wasn't even living in town when this property got messed up. None, you know, a lot of us weren't. At this point, somebody is going to have to clean it up whether it's directed by Army Corps or whether it's an over 55 community, which is probably not even zoned for that location. Um, an over 55 um, multifamily, I'm not sure if it's zoned there or not, is it? Oh, so. it could be. Well, it would have to go to town meeting <laughs> because keep in mind I'm that, <coughs> I mean, keep in mind that part of the reason for the zones is to attract business as well as residential. There is a tax impact of having all residential in town, right? Can I say something? Yeah, of course. Yes, but he's not going to pay all his taxes because it's going to be agricultural. It's right. It's it's. it's if it's he's going to say it's rate. agricultural, he's not going to pay the same taxes as we are. Well, keep in mind, if you have agricultural land, like when someone puts their property in 61A, they still pay full taxes on the lot. That's the house lot. People sometimes, I have people who come in and say, oh, it's in 61A, I'm not going to pay any taxes. And they're wrong, because what ends up happening is the house itself is taxed at full value, and it's the remaining land that's taxed at agricultural it's value. It's not going to be a house there. Yeah, but this land, so are you going to apply for 61C the, the, for the whole be, lot? It would be 61B forestry, and just so you know, the town gain, gains something by that. Not only is there favorable tax treatment, but the town gains an option to purchase, okay, in the land, in the event that the land is ever converted. Okay, my question, the question I hear coming from the public, though, is... Only a is, portion of the land. Is the entire land going to be 61B, or only, only the portion that's only the forestry? Only the portion of the land. How much? Only the residential portion. My understanding is that this portion is going to be in agricultural forestry use, that, and that that will be put under 61B, which means that if it ever once gets developed, the town will have a right of first refusal to match the purchase price. Um, this land mm -hmm. and these buildings will get taxed as commercial properties. And if right now we have a uniform tax rate, right? You knew that, right? right. And so you know this. So, the, so right now they're going to pay the same, right? It'll just get valued differently because it's commercial versus residential. But they're going to pay full taxes on all of this, which right now, I'm a, I don't know what the taxes are on that. Does anybody? Well, Has anybody looked at it? It's about 10000 10000 So right now the valuation of it, the way it stands, is pretty low. Because that's not a lot of valuation, right? May I add something to it? And it's a question for you guys. This part here where you, um, when I put still trees, is it going to have a driveway or a road to access it? It's to be planted. No, but so how are you going to access the trees to go there? Well, every three years or so, we will cut the trees down and replant them. And yes. how do you get there? 
Right. To you, the dry you, land. You you're, don't. You're, you're, usually there's just here. trails. Do you see here? It says. <coughs> that says a. Um, yeah. That's an existing gravel conditions. path. Okay. So that's an existing gravel path on the property. It's basically a field, and part of it will have trees on it. And okay. So in, in one section of the bylaws, and, and I know that I don't know what's new information and what's not because it's been revised four times already. That Typically, it says that, that, just so you know, I know, that happens all the I time. Know, I'm learning a lot, trust <laughs> yeah. me. That, it go, that it's permissible to go 30 feet, right, towards the... Uh, in the residential. In the residential. Uh, into a new zone. And then it says, as long as, and I think that, that people maybe missed that, and I'm going to need to go back to my attorney to check on that, as long as that district with, um, with less restriction has a frontage. The district, it doesn't say anything about the law. And this district residential does not have a frontage. The business B has a frontage, that one doesn't. Okay, can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. Is there anything they could do that would make you comfortable with them being there? Yes, not have mulch that will cause me to not enjoy the, um, the air, to, to be able to enjoy a, a clean and pure air. Um, not The traffic is already unbearable, and again, I would like to see, I don't know much about his operation, how many are going <coughs> to come in, and how many are those going to be, what are they going to, when they say picking and dumping, or what kind of activity is going to go in there? I don't know, because there's so, there's so many revisions that I guess I would want to ask the board on behalf of, in the delegate that we submitted, of the rest of, not just the bodies, but the neighbors, is for us to have a final, so we can actually review it. But we don't have anything yet. This we haven't been able to. At all, in two weeks, other than we've eliminated the brand. I'm looking at the engineer right Correct. now. Correct. Okay. So that's it. So the engineer is saying that he hasn't modified the site plan that the only modifications that have come is in the conditions they've asked us, or they've been willing to concede with respect to the grinder and the hours of operation. Now, my other question is, have you been, have you been by and seen their mulch piles and their operations in the town center, which are not I, the prettiest things to yes, be in the middle I of the town haven't. center, but they're there. I was told they, they, they want them out of there, and that's why they want to come over here, but I haven't. I know that Paula did went and could not, could not um, compare it because there was only three uh, piles of mulch. Then the other operation, what I asked Mr. Watsky is, I know that by Massachusetts law, they're supposed to have 18, um, I believe 18 feet in between piles, and he told me that that didn't seem to be the case. So we are concerned about not just the grinder again, but its fire, how, how um, I know that Mr. Norman explained a lot of what the different things that we're looking for towards the, the letters, so we're looking forward for the board to, to read all of our letters and probably take every, everything into consideration. We're not against Smith & Son. We're just pro, uh, comfortable, and peaceful life. And that does, that kind of, that type of operation, I know that there was a question before um, that you asked, Attorney, um, what is like so is there any industrial yeah there is industrial a there is industrial B in town and that type of operation for me belongs there away from rural businesses businesses and that's why towns most most towns have that type of, of um, separation because that type of operation is not friendly to the neighbors we currently live right next to gardens choice in a little bobcat that is, there's a little fence between us, and that bobcat opening the door of our kitchen, it was already bad enough. And all of what we could think is, imagine all of the other large equipment. Imagine how much busier Gardner's it's Choice. Mr. Smith, speak through the chair. Sorry. <laughs> but Gardner's <laughs> Choice has been closed since they have lived there. Okay. So. Wait until it opens up and they start spreading mulch. All right, but, all right, let's let's let the others get a little bit in. Can I speak then? Um, I'm sorry, who? I'm Lou Horvath. I've lived in town for 50 years. I'm sorry, what, Lou say Horvath. it loud I'm enough sorry. for the tape recorder. My name is Lou Horvath. I've lived in town for 50 years. I've been a manager of a business in the Pembroke Center for 15 years. I've actually lived through a, a Smith construction in my neighborhood. And anything he touches, really, if you look through town, is an improvement on what it is. I mean, on the state highway there now, when we drive uh, where Chip Tech was, it, uh, it, it's been a mess for years. I mean, it used to be a little 
liquor store there that burnt down maybe 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine what an improvement to the town it would be. And when he built this house, I never knew he was out there. You would, mm -hmm. you would never know he was out there. He was courteous, coming through with his trucks, and we're, we were in a residential neighborhood. And when he was done, I mean, he made little tunnels for turtles to climb through. So he did everything exactly beyond what he needed to do. So, and, and in the center of town, he, his business in the center of town has been there forever. And it's always been a, a, a benefit to the town. So I, I think on his uh, building on that lot or cleaning the lot up would be such an improvement. And I think the neighbors, when he built in our neighborhood, we were very skeptical. And it, it, it's unbelievable what he's done. So if you give him a chance, I think you might, get, might be very happy with what he do, does. Now your address is? I'm on Pine Mill Drive. You're on Pine Mill? Okay. Miss? Well, I've been in town 30, 40 years. And there's no, there was, there was no uh, liquor store there 25 one, one years point, ago. No, right, might have been long ago. Yeah. Was a little kid yeah. burned down. Yeah, 50 years ago, maybe. Well, I'm 48. Um, so. I, I, I appreciate <laughs> what he says, but um, there's a lot of things. Um, he lives on Pine Mill Circle, um, where where Mr. Smith lives, so yes, I understand. Um, I'm that. sure they're going to say he's done a great job up there, and he probably has. Well, sometimes neighbors hate what you do, right? <laughs> sometimes <laughs> we've heard that too. <laughs> um, I think that uh, what people don't understand is, um, even though uh, Chip Tech put those barriers up, yeah. believe me, I can hear everything going on. Like I said the last time, I knew there was trucks going out there in the morning. So it's it's such, I don't know why, because um, there are a few trees there, but we still can hear it. We can hear diesel trucks starting up. We heard, I used to hear, I used to call the police all the time on Mr. Chipko because um, he didn't go by any of the laws. Right. And I think that's been clearly established, right? right? He was but, bad. But... I could hear trucks starting up over there at five o'clock in the morning. So it's a, it's the sound barrier there. There is no sound barrier between our houses and there. And that might be the difference. And to me, that's the problem. I I don't if I don't know how long it's going to take, but you know, I don't want to be getting woken up every single morning for God knows how long, uh, and then have to deal with with that. It, it's just... But so the owner of the property has a right at some point to turn it over. I understand that. So I guess my question is how would you propose it be done in a way that would be less disruptive to your life? I don't think anything like that should be going in there. No, no, but how are you going to clean it up without that well, noise? You, well, clean it up, yes, but not have something stay in there with the trucks going in and out and, you know, I don't know what this sifting stuff is either, um, and it sounds, well, somebody said it's going to take over a year for this to go on to clean it up. It is a mess, I will tell you. Well, you know what? Yeah. That's yeah. going to affect us a Okay, lot. guys. Six o'clock in the morning So we have some other folks eight o'clock at night. In. All right, so we'll give the applicant a chance to, to respond, but what I want to understand is, are you proposing that it be later in the day for those operations? Or they're talking about the loan. It, it, there's going to have to be a cleanup, whether it's this person or someone else. So when we're talking about the cleanup and whether it takes a year or something, that, Maybe. you know, the property owner owns that property. We can't keep them from cleaning up their property. I mean, they don't own it yet. No, 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 I know, but somebody's, it, no, <laughs> even if you built 55 communities, someone would have to clean up the Why property. Why don't they go after the person who owns it and tell them to clean it up? But it's still going to make noise. So may I say but something? Then we but we won't have to have noise after the noise. Okay, so that's the issue. Okay. Give me one second, if you don't mind. So when you say in, one is not should be the burden on us to prove right. what should be there. I suppose we right now, what is right now on the table, it's for business, not just for the cleanup. So I think that right. where there is a year of cleanup, if we were here for the type of hearing, it will be fair. But what we try to oppose or challenge is the business itself. Like you say, it will be permanent. Trucks coming in and out. 
the last meeting, Ms. Robinson said, I already can hear that they're doing something there. Obviously, they were. They were dumping and doing stuff that they were not supposed to. And people already, Mr. Norman's kids riding on the bike, came home and said, hey, I can hear people doing stuff already there. Can you imagine how a full operation, that's what we're here for. So, and that's when I think that it might be tricky to ask to ask us or, or uh, Ms. Robinson, <coughs> what would you like there? What kind of cleaning? And somebody has to clean it. Well, one, yes, make the guy that owns the property. Obviously, he has plenty of money uh, as an investor to clean the property as he should have. He, he uh, whatever it is, we're not. <laughs> I'm not sure I buy that. Okay. My, my point is, it's not in this meeting. We're not here to, to discuss. Um, well, we as a planning board do have to decide, have to try to find solutions that are good for the development of property in the town. So I see as my job here in the planning board is to take into account what the putters want and to take into account not causing more injury than is necessary. But I also see my job as making sure that we get sort of the highest and best use of the land in town. And so this is business zone property. And so it's not designed and it's not zoned to be residential, really. It's designed to be business property. It is. This, it's commercial residential. Mm -hmm. And that's why, why it was allowed for my house to be built right behind that. Right. So that's one. It's not just business. It's not an industrial and industrial B that is not impacted by sunset. Mm -hmm. And for the, for the reason is when, when you allowed businesses and residents to, to be together, mingle together, it's because they both are going to be harmonious to each other. So that type of, and I, in, my, in my letter, I hope that I wrote, that this simply put by the Cambridge Dictionary, the light industry that everybody's trying to push for this zoning here, is anything that it's small, that it does not get processed with big machines. And any of those trucks and, and, and big um, stuff that he is going to bring in is not light industrial. But they're not going to be processing on site. It, that's for the grinder. I'm sure that stuff is going to be dumped and, and, and raw material is going to come in. That's what the whole point <coughs> is. So you take away the grinder and the operation is <coughs> over there. You still have raw material or process material and those type of big trucks that are going to come in and out, including probably customers. Yeah, I mean, right down we have that literally in the center of town, surrounded by residential, residential properties that are a lot closer well, than you got, guys. You've got several operations similar to what is being proposed right here, door. right next door, yeah, and down the block, yeah, and in the residential commercial zone, and it has been allowed there. So for the record, I, I promised the applicant <coughs> that I would also give him a chance to respond to your questions about the loam and the amount of loam and the amount of noise and the amount of machines. So Dan or Attorney Galvin, I don't know if you want to respond uh, to that. Yeah, so I'm Dan Smith from Smith & Son. Um, the, the screener is uh, very similar components to the stacker in the hall that you guys looked at. Uh, same engine, same belt. Uh, we ha have one right now in the center. Uh, it's been operating there since 2002. Uh, if any of you guys were following that Facebook post, my neighbor's right out back. She's probably 200 feet from it commented that we have never had an issue and we're good neighbors and um, Dave has obviously been here every meeting with the farm stand he's under 200 feet from it it's just not a loud and not a noxious thing it's it's a component that is definitely going to have to take place as a cleanup process uh, for, for, for a long period of time you guys all saw how much material is there that's going excuse me going to have to be processed <coughs> um, it's going to be an extensive project to clean it up um, Nothing short of a huge undertaking. It's really a big commitment to get that place cleaned up, and uh, we're looking forward to, to really stepping it up. You know, I built that last place in Pembroke Center when I was 20 years old. No traffic study, no landscape plan, no impact study. I just, you guys gave me the opportunity to run with it, and I landscaped it myself. I designed it myself. I put the place together. Um, I've never had anything but compliments on it. Nineteen years later, you know, I've learned a lot about development and building. I feel like I can do a much better job this time. Really up the ante. I think you guys are going to love it when it's done, to be honest with you. But it's, um, you know, we've learned a lot and come a long way. And we're doing everything just a little bit better than we were then. And, and to us, it's really exciting. But I guess I try. Um, 
Attorney Galvin? Yes, I mean, are you, only the, a small portion of that property is residential commercial. And um, in the residence. Can you yeah. delineate the property and the zones? Because I don't even know at this point. So this is business. The, the residential need. commercial district is this. This part over this green spot on this corner. This is the line. You can see the dotted line here. Yeah. This is the residential district A. It's from this line then, back. Yeah. And then the vast majority of the property is in the business B zone. So off. all of this right. is in business Correct. B. That's the that's the the border between the residential commercial and business B. It's, it's, right it's here. about half of the. Is the board here? Half or more yeah. of the property is in yeah. the business B district. Right. Stole my daughter's colored pencils and I guess all welcome to look at it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll pass that around. So, thank you, Mr. Norman. So just, okay. so Are you aware. also an attorney? Yeah. Attorney Norman? <laughs> okay. So the things that can go in this in this area are, are business uses of any type, retail stores with no restrictions on hours, all white industrial uses, all of which would have trucks in and out materials, lab uses, research uses inside and outside, personal service establishments of any type, multifamily dwellings, restaurants, banks with drive throughs gas stations, body establishments, and any type of municipal use could be located on these properties. And in the business district B, if there were a residence, you could only keep an existing residence. You can't have any new residences there. So that has to be phased out. The only place you could even keep a residence on that property would be in the rear or on the right hand side in the residential commercial district, which was intended to blend residential and commercial uses on the same site. And just so you know, there's 25,000 cars that go by the, Ms. Karras' home every day. Including, I, I think that Mr. Smith has told us multiple times that his trucks are already going by. So this isn't the country per se because this is right on an arterial state numbered route uh, which has sections with multiple lanes mm -hmm. and um, obviously everybody knows what's happened at the end of Pleasant Street and hopefully that situation will re continue to resolve but this is such a de minimis impact on 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 the daily life you can't even quantify it so uh, I, I appreciate that people want to see very little there but this is a very big site which has to be cleaned up and this is a use we think that needs to be the spirit of the final. Um, I'll come back to you in one yeah. second. We have someone over here who wanted to speak. Um, my name is Jennifer Smith. I'm Dan's wife. I'm sure some of you know that. Um, I appreciate all you guys coming out here and speaking. But I've been thinking about this day in and day out like Dan has. I don't think you guys realize 16 acres is huge. And like he just stated, a gas station could go out there. Apartment buildings could go out there. A little shopping center could go out there. You're talking about traffic flow. That's where you're going to see an increase in traffic traffic flow coming from all over. In and out, in and out, all day long. You know, where, like someone just stated, we do travel 53 day in and day out. I'm one of the trucks that go by you. And it's not going to change because it's the same. It's going to be the same whether we're coming from Mattachusett Street or here. So I don't think you guys get to be really going to think about what could go in there. You might be bummed out if there is a, a I don't know, a 40 b or elderly housing or something. You'll have ambulances coming in and out there all day long. <laughs> 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 Mr. Norman. I'm just saying, it's, whatever goes out there, you're going to have a lot of traffic, you know? Whether it's us or, I don't know, just you got to really think about it when you want out there because something is going to go out there. Like everyone keeps saying, something's going to go out there. Something that doesn't lot. smell would be nice. Oh, yeah, that's my other thing. Thank you for bringing that up. So the mulch actually smells lovely. I don't know why you guys think it smells so bad. Why are we smelling the same thing? We have a pine bark. It's beautiful. Come, pick it up, sniff it. I want you to smell it. You keep saying it's a god-awful smell. That's what... That's what's beautiful about it. We're so proud of it, and you guys are making it seem like it's this disgusting trash that's sitting out behind you, and it's really bothered me because I don't think you understand what our company is about. You should go to Mattachusett Street. You should walk in there. You should touch the mulch. You should look at our trucks. You should look at what we've done out there. I know you're shaking your head. You don't really know us. You just you just moved to this area, but we're we, we're a great 
come to me, I'm not just saying that because he's my husband, but we care. You don't realize how much you, we care. We care what all of you think. We really do. Miss Colin, so I appreciate it if, um, if you mind, if you don't mind, um, if Mrs. Smith does, does what we're trying to do, which is speak to the boy as opposed to calling me with him, shaking my head and going off on me, I don't appreciate it. Um, if you ask any farmer if, if the, um, horse manure smells good, I, I can tell you I have a lot of family that are farmers and they tell you it smells awesome. So at the end of the day, I do want you guys to please consider that whatever it is, whether it's agriculture, whether it's a business, it should not be offensive to the neighborhood. And like you said, that you, in, in the bylaws that you cited, that is to make the best um, use of the land, it is also to make sure that the residents of the town and all in the borders, uh, uh, precisely, are protected from any type of business that is uh, nauseous, odor, or noise, and um, trucks coming in and out. I know that the uh, resident from 408 Washington Street, they described the, the uh, nightmare that they live in already, and this is 416. not even, 416, sorry, it's not even close to the type of, in like what Mrs. Smith is saying, 16 acres is a lot. So activity there is expected to be big with very uh, few big machines. And regardless of what type, well, even if it's a church that goes in there, if it's making noise, if it's obnoxious and offensive to the neighborhood, and that's what is written in the bylaws. And the bylaws were written for a reason. It was not just to protect and make sure that the town flourished with businesses, and it's to also make sure that it that adheres by protecting the, the people. Um, I'm um, Jacqueline Hauser, and I live on Carriage House Lane, which I'm not in the butter, mm -hmm. but I live close enough so that I am somewhat concerned about this. When I came in here, it's the first meeting, and the first time I heard about this when we received a letter in the mail over the weekend that there was going to be a hearing, and we thought, well, we'll go. Now, when I walked in here, the first thing I heard was the cleanup. That was incident, I mean, that was the most important thing. And I am concerned about who pays for the cleanup if you're going to do all this work that you mentioned. Right, right now, mean, right now the, the applicant is the one who will be cleaning it up. Not oh, the, does not, he, does not, he not the owner of the property. He, if he buys the property, he's buying it as is. And he's going to take on the responsibility to clean it up. Oh, I'm I assuming see. that's why the owner of the property has picked <coughs> the owner of the. Well, uh, I can't say the owner was here. I can say that the last meeting, I believe, somebody who was uh, here speaking for the owner said that they had many people interested in it, but this was the right person. And I believe it was because the cost to clean up this property would make it to the point where those other people weren't interested unless the owner cleaned it up and therefore it probably wouldn't be worthwhile to sell it because he doesn't even know how much it's going to cost to clean up. So I'm assuming that Mr. Smith has taken it upon himself to decide to purchase the property knowing he's going to have to clean it up and probably his concessions in the price but I don't know we're not involved in that <clears throat> but it's a it's going to be a daunting task just because of the amount of time that Chip Tech existed there without enforcement of the rules and regs from the town, the selectmen and the enforcement officer that should have closed it down, taken it to court. But he was there for a long period of time. And I know he had an operation down further and then moved to that location. So it existed there for probably 10 years, I believe, uh, as he was working that property. So there's a lot of material that had been brought in there with nobody watching what was going on and grinding that was going on there. And I understand why the people would be upset. But as looking at it right now, as <coughs> walking that property, it's, it's, it's going to take a, a quite a bit of money to fix it. Um, thank you. Okay. Over here. Hi, um, I'm Danielle Markall oh. from 416 Washington Street. Um, I know that my concern um, as being at my location for 28 years has been 
every business that's gone in around us is not being policed. It's not, the buffer zones aren't being enforced. They're running rip shot all over the place. My concern is, if this goes in, the same thing is gonna happen. They open when they wanna open. They bulldoze a road when they wanna bull bulldoze a road. Break a berm when they wanna break a berm. There's no buffer zone. I know my neighbor across the street, Mrs. Teagan, has been trying for six years to get a buffer. At where? The blooming place? Yes. And at this point, she's so fed up, she's selling her home. And she's a dear friend of mine. We abut 408. Again, buffer zone, not enforced. We've been at it for just about the same time, six so years. You guys have talked to the building inspector. We and have done everything. And he doesn't want to. I mean, obviously, it's expensive, but you guys could take them to court to enforce the the um, the provisions. My we unfortunately don't just have that jurisdiction. Those are just examples. Yeah. My concern is it's going to be more of the same, and, and we're tired. Mm -hmm. And we have civil rights. We have civil rights. We have the right to live peacefully, quietly, be happy, be healthy. This isn't doing it. <clears throat> I spoke at the last hearing. My name is Charles McAfee. I represent the builder, uh, the owner of the property up in Concord, New Hampshire. And what this gentleman just said is accurate. Uh, the owner, uh, who is, I want to make sure you all understand that the owner of this property is not Chip Tech. Uh, the Chip Tech bought the property from this, the current owner. Uh, couldn't meet their financial <coughs> obligations, and the current owner was had to take the property back. So the gentleman in Concord, New Hampshire, is the owner of the property. And <clears throat> we fielded numerous and numerous proposals uh, to, uh, to, to purchase this site. And the owner was very careful, knowing all that was involved with the site, uh, to select someone that he felt could do the right job on the, time, on the property and turn it to what it should be. And to ask, answer one other comment that was mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Smith uh, called me some time ago, and he asked if he could use the site to store some fill. Before the owner in New Hampshire agreed to do that, he had me call the engineer to make sure that the, the, the material that was coming into the site was nothing more than clean sand. That's what's been delivered to the site. Uh, I understand from Dan some of it will be used on the site and some of it will be trucked away at a later date. So from all the, uh, I've been involved with this property for longer than I'd like folks and uh, uh, there's been numerous proposals but this um, seems to be the most apropos for the site. <coughs> you haven't spoken. I, I met one of the uh, residents. I'm sorry, your name again. Paula DeMello from Fall Under Washington Street. I met one of the residents on Pleasant Street today. He's not able to come to the meeting because he works at night. So that means he has to sleep during the day. Uh, and he, he signed off on the letter that we brought in with the signatures. And he actually told me they took three weeks for the firemen to extinguish the fire that occurred on that property. So many of those logs they're there, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the fire that occurred back about 10 years ago. Which mm -hmm. Nobody here is really concerned about the fires that these things cause. Mulch mounds cause fires. And for three weeks, it took three weeks for them to extinguish it. That's, that's a big deal. So we will be exposed not only to <coughs> all of these items, but nobody's bringing up the, the, the fires. So the, they would have to comply with fire code, I think. Oh, lucky us. <laughs> I'm Deputy Chief McCormick with the Pembroke Fire Department. What happened at the last site will not happen at this site. Can, can you explain, you. though, the difference so in terms of the material? So there will not be, those piles won't be stored. What they kind of piles were there before? Well, what, what happened at the last site is we continuously stored piles, and whether that's an issue that we all created by not enforcing. policing and enforcing. Um, they store a pile on top, pile on top, pile, and then didn't turn those, which then they decompose underneath, 
decomposition created a fire. We went two or three times. We had one that was a two-day fire, one was a three-week fire. Multiple other fires with combustibles that either someone lit or they spontaneously caught. Um, this particular property won't do that because the rules that we're going to set, if it is purchased by him, will be the piles will be turned. He'll have a yard sprinkler or a yard hydrant that we can attach to, that he'll be able to attach to and what his own mulch if he has to, keep that in check. Uh, he won't be bringing in logs and timber and, you know, long trees. You know, there'll be, there'll be guidelines that he'll have to follow under agricultural or under mass general law, which allows forestry. And do you guys do code compliance uh, visits or not. how do you do that? We, we don't, there, there are laws within 148, which are the, the laws that we follow, yeah. and also under 310, which is allows you to burn, open burn. Uh, we don't really do a lot of agricultural, because we just, it's just not what we do. It would be more conservation or, you know, planning board what you just put on top of it. The last issue, three week fire, was just a conglomeration of things that just went wrong altogether. And that's why it took us so long to put it out. This will not have that issue, I can guarantee you. So, the, the piles that are in town center right now? At his property now? At his property now. Have you guys ever inspected I, those? I, have, I drive by them on a daily basis doing my inspections. Those piles are not even near what the pile at Chip Tech was. Okay. We, had, we had actually Mr. Smith's machine, I believe, on top of one of those piles. And there were pictures of it, but you wouldn't even know it's a, an excavator. That's how big the piles were. You mean to me, so when we went to his property at Copeland Lumber, oh, the the S the um, what do you call it the um, conveyor was was yeah. here yeah. and yeah, they, it could they, go they from the ground to the top on these piles. And I mean, digging. I don't know. We probably went yeah. sixty feet, fifty-five feet, sixty feet uh, down. The, it just won't happen again. As long as I'm here, I'm here for a while. The chief's here for a while. They'll be promoting. You know, as we move on. There'll be guidelines that we don't have to do that. Because that was a cost that we had to eat that was non-reimbursable. You mean the putting out the yeah, fire and monitoring fire. that right. fire? Because there was no one to pay for that. Because um, so, Chip Tech was yeah, going under. Right. So we had to eat that cost. So we, we can't really afford that again. And right, it, it's just a nuisance to the neighbors. It was a nuisance to, you know, just all around. So I can, <laughs> on the fire side of it, I can guarantee you that won't happen again. They have my word. Can I have a comment I, on that? Yes. And I, and I can too. Yeah. All right. I'll, Go ahead, Mr. Um, so when we, now we're moving the grinding aspect, the only finished product on the property, the finished product is almost, the, the seasoned professionals say it doesn't burn, the finished product. It burns in the form of chip techs, piles of stumps being driven on, compacted. It also burns in the, in the rough, rough stage where it's big chunks of wood, like way, way out back in Copeland. That's what's <coughs> at risk. When it's finished product, you, you, you don't have no. so what we observed at Copeland was that in the way back where you had the larger chips that sort of yes. the first round those are the you had um, sprinklers or something on yep. them yep because those get prepped to grind first of all keeping the moisture doing this process right which did not take place previously um, you, you lessen the odds of a fire drastically but um, that pile with the sprinklers was just getting ready to be ground and we like to get the moisture content up. We feel as though it makes a better product. But the stuff way, way out back is at the stage where it's subject to burn, which is like um, when we, all that's getting eliminated now that we're not doing the grinding. It's just going to be finished product, which doesn't have the air content to even line up by anyways. Okay. And then one of you have your hand up, Ms. Carroll. No, no, the, the, the deputy chief. So one of the things the potential fire is you're remember. the deputy oh, chief, right? <laughs> Whatever I say, do not take it. No, I did, oh, no, I didn't. I don't take I anything personal. I do want you to show no. up in my house. No, and come <laughs> <to control. laughs> no you, had, you, had a, you had a fire question. I wanted to make sure it was answered. No, so there's one. Um, the the uh, mulch to, in, and the chips supposed to be actually kept. Reading about it in different research. And bigger pieces as opposed to the finished product and it's supposed to not go more than 140 degrees and by internal if they don't get turned off then it's supposed to be turned very often for it to flow with the air and away any fires having 
um, in one of the proposed functions here, it's also to rent to people. You get one person that smokes and throws that. I used to be a smoker. And, and there's no great that, cheap that, that I you can That, I, can't, that uh, exactly. I won't guarantee because I can't guarantee that people My point. So, but the don't use common memory, sense. There's, they, I think that what you can guarantee is that all the measures that should have taken before will be taken now. But not even that you could say 100% that no fires will be there. Correct. I can't. Okay. I wouldn't. I have a question. Is is there still going to be a gas uh, tank in there to fill your gas trucks up with? Fuel, yes. Fuel, Fuel tank? Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of scary. Meets, meets the code. There are probably five of them throughout town now, the landscaping companies. Okay. Ronzi meets the codes in a six self contained tank within a tank. He, he falls under the law. Mm -hmm. what he is. It's less volatile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Norman? Um, Mr. Norman? Two, two comments. Uh, around the cleanup, or just, just a request to the board that if there's some way to put some kind of time parameters around that, um, some kind of time limit, and then if, if they can't meet it, they could they come back for an extension yeah. or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Something reasonable. Everyone understands what's a future for them. If we can work longer hours, too, we can do it quicker. Secondly, on the agricultural exemption, I would just ask the board to take a really careful look at that. Um, I don't think we can litigate it here, but it's it's kind of a tricky question. It's, I don't think it's so well settled. Uh, the lumbering is, the chipping and grinding is lumbering, or, or the, whatever the operation is, is going to be lumbering as that's defined. I don't think we can resolve that here, but just please take a close look at it, because if it doesn't meet that definition, then there does have to be an incidental use. And so my I, question I is this, though, if they're not doing grinding, if we actually put yeah. into the conditions that they not do grinding at the site, would that get away from the agricultural issues you're raising, or would we still have those issues? Well, they've got growth I, I and cultivation. I would argue that it's still not necessarily an agricultural use, and I think I would look at the cotton case again. No, 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 but they don't need to rely on agricultural use. And that's my next point, is that if, if, if they're in compliance anyway with the bylaws, they don't need an agricultural use. I think they need and it only the if they have the grinding. this board will still have key. I yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. I think I think that given that they're going to get rid of the grinding, that we may be able to punt the agricultural use to yeah. maybe uh -huh. never have to decide. Am I, I right? Do, I do think they're planning on, uh, if they're still planning on growing some material at that site, on the on the residential. The but that's that clearly plant, agricultural use, that's, right? That's correct. Right. But it's still part of the lot. Um, right. And so, it's not like we can say it's not going to be agricultural, agricultural use. because there's a portion of the lot that may be used in agriculture. Whether it's they're not going to be grinding it there, maybe they're going to come in, harvest it, take it off site, grind it in Marshville, bring it back. But agricultural use, but I think using it, we wouldn't. Well, forestry that forestry is. would be agricultural use. Like that's not that's not on the line, right? Forestry. With the agricultural. Right. But as also, long as the felled so trees are taken off site. You, look, you have to look back and do those sales ratios. Right. The usage ratios right. under, that, under the statute. So it's not a forward looking question. But, and, so, and in my letter, I say I'm not sure the board has what it needs in front of them to make a decision about agricultural use. So I guess my. Forward looking. Once I, I agree that that's kind of a tricky question, whether the grinding operations agricultural use is kind of a tricky question. Um, but uh, but it seemed to me like once they got rid of the grinding, if all they're going to do is grow trees and cut them and cart them off site, that then we would be clearly within agricultural use for that portion of the land. So as long as we could still prohibit grinding of the of the wood they'd have to get some sort of later decision to get rid of that condition. They'd have to come back for a hearing or something to get, they'd have to come back for a whole process. It may, go to, it may go to the assessor's office for that, but to determine the, the amount that would be limited 
but they wouldn't be able to grind any of no, it no, no. if we're we not, have a condition that says no grinding. We're not going to allow the grinding on the site, number one, after the cleanup. Right. So they can they can continue to grow on that, that on that property because otherwise it's dead to them anyway. Because you're not going to allow them to store on it. Well, and the trees may also be nice to have on that property from they a buffer right. standpoint. Correct. Right. If you have trees, it's going to provide more buffer. But Mr. Norman, do you agree that if they are only doing the agricultural growing the trees and cutting the trees, that it avoids some of the trickier agricultural questions? As, as I read that, yeah, as I understand the statute, that would be, that would be forestry. And then that would be okay? As long as they're not, okay. as long as they're not processing it on it's site. A, the, the que it's a question of incidental <coughs> use, when that, when an incidental use is appropriate. Okay. with respect to the agricultural use, the primary agricultural use. Um, because you took the time to present the letter, I just want to make sure there was nothing else that you wanted us to think about right, tonight. I'll just ask you to read it. I know you got it late, so yeah. it's all in. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, just, just announce yourself again so we yeah. um so the cutting down would be a process would take weeks and perhaps months right it would be the chainsaws that would be going to the whole neighborhood and the loading and they would have to put it through these specialized machines that take away all the branches and that would be loaded onto trucks and then removed from from the property so there would be you know that would be forestry, perhaps, and it would be what all of these chainsaws that would have to go through the properties every so often, right? Right, but keep in mind that forestry is generally a preferred use in Massachusetts, which is why they get the protection of 61B, because it, it allows for more open space because you're not developing land, you're keeping it open space. So generally 61B is a preference at the state level for forestry 61A is a preference for agricultural use, and 61C is a preference for open space. Six, 61B is forestry. Yeah, 61C. 61 61A is, is straight agriculture. And 61C is recreation or open space? I believe recreation. It's recreation. Thank and you. And recreational use. Um, I, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is what she's saying. They're going to plant trees in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to cut them down. I yeah. don't know how many trees are planted on them. <laughs> There's a forestry plan that yeah. the forester it, it, so comes in and does. So when they cut them down, they're going to have noise down. They're going to have the chippers going in for the little bit. Then they're going to bring them out in trucks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's still going to be noisy. And the, the other thing I wanted to say is concerning um, Mr. Ma Mrs. Markell's question. I was up here fighting with this town when Chico was in there with the zoning board. Why? Because nobody, would, they had conditions. They set conditions at one point. Nobody followed through. Nobody went down there. Nobody, it, it's just ridiculous. Right, but I you mean, know, I have so to how, this is how we feel. No, you know, I, this I, is how we live. This is yeah. That's how but you this live. This is the Z, Excuse me. We're talking, Maureen. We're talking about the ZBA, right? Right. Well, that's but who you have to the go. Plan, with. But the plan, that's but the plan board with. works a little different than than the ZBA does. We actually do go out and we do enforce what we set. To some extent, we just rely to, on to, to the best well. of the of the law. And to what extent we can. To know, what extent yeah. we can. I mean, I will say that. We have not had any enforcement issues ever brought to our attention with regard to his current operation in town center. So you're raising questions about a company who ignored every condition and try and you're asking us to hold that against a company that in the town center. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not I'm trying to put tell you why we are right. No, I understand. I mean I also understand that bloom in place we were out there what, two years ago? Because, I mean, part of the issue there was more that it's overly congested on the site, and there's trucks unloading, a, trucks unloading and, and 
areas they're not supposed to be. And we tried to come up with a solution that, you know, you were the, one of you guys were the first to tell me is not really being honored. Um, but the, but the, but it's interesting because those that balloon we've had complaints about that balloon place. We've we've never had a complaint of a, of a of this operation being right in the middle of town center. So it does seem but you know, different. But there are, there's a lot more going to be going on than what's in town center. So can I, may I? Wait, wait, may I have someone who hasn't spoken before? I'm trying to, do, I'm not trying to ignore you guys, but there are a lot of people here, and I'm trying to mm -hmm. give everyone a chance to speak, and also mindful of the fact that we've been going for yeah, an I, hour and 45 I, minutes, I, and at some point we I, I understand think, the issues. Yeah, and what was the date that we had here? It's February 20th is our deadline, so I'm... Well, we've got a we've got a meeting on the twelfth, correct? So I'm thinking, do, it's the twelfth fully full. It's pretty much full, and it, it seems like we've got so much. I mean, I think we really need to do a sixty-day extension to. Uh, We're not going to be submitting any more information. So. I don't think yeah, we need sixty days, Matthew. I, don't think I was going to say we need either. another meeting. I don't. We need to review all the information that's here. Yeah. We need to. I would say one more meeting would. One be. more meeting, and we'd be able to decide, in one way or another. Um, I don't think we need 60 days. I think we may need, if we don't have time to hear it on the 12th, then we may need to go to the next hearing date. Yeah, and that would be the 26th, which is after that date of, did you so say the 22nd? A, so we may need a 30-day extension, just um, to give us time. Yeah, because we've got the 12th and the 26th, and the 19th, unfortunately, is, a, is a President's Day, so we don't have that open to us like we did tonight. Where we had a... I mean, typically on these site plans, we only have a very short um, hearing, and we've really expanded the amount of hearings to be able to fully take in. And I, I mean, there have been a lot of changes here, so we've tried to fully take in all of the comments. Hi, I'm, I'm Scott Clavin. I'm from the DPW, plus I've known Dan for 20 years. I run the cemetery that abuts Mr. Smith's property. He can be running the screenery owns, and we can be doing an interment, and it is not disturbed. The people can still come do their interment. You can hear the priest having his service. No disruption from Mr. Smith whatsoever during an interment. I don't know if anybody realized. I've been here for 32 years for the town. I dealt with Mr. Smith with Chipco. You're 20 years in the future with this equipment. And if anybody knew Bob like I knew Bob, Bob didn't maintain his equipment. He didn't care if the muffler fell off the thing or you know, the, the screens were rattling or whatever. Anybody that knows Dan knows his equipment's top-notch, it's state-of-the-art. It doesn't make that noise. We used Dan last year to grind the Monroe Street pit, the wood chips at the pit. We never got a complaint once. He was there three days grinding. You couldn't hear him. And the re how close to the residents? We have Victoria Lane, Chris, Christina Murray right there. We never got a call, complain about him. They were happy, the job he did. And it was a no cost to the town. Mr. Smith provides so many pro services to the DPW at no cost. That's what you need to look at too as a budget item. Thank you. So may I, um, Ms. Carr? I, I don't think that I got how many uh, screen machines at 100 horsepower are they planning? Because I'm assuming that we keep on talking about, you said, you never got a complaint from, you cannot compare that to foresting trees. There's nobody living next door to them that they, well, what is new the amount of screen? Okay, one. Mr. Smith, how many screens are you going to operate? One, one screener, one screen. How long would it take you to cut that area down? we will probably cut that in a day and a half. A day and a half, yeah. And our excavators have hydraulic chainsaws, so you actually don't even hear chainsaws. So after three years of quiet tree growing, there'll be a day and a half of cutting and getting them out of there. Yeah. It's a non-issue. So can can the board ask Mr. Smith to explain the activity that is going to go um, from the beginning, maybe, to have a better sense what's going on here? What I'm sorry. We I know here. What you're about. So he's going to be forcing trees yeah. right here, and which is generally preferred juice. As long as it does not, and every bylaw, even Massachusetts, when they talk about forestry, <coughs> says that it should not be. Um, a, no noise pollution, regardless. Okay. So I mean, you're going to have something on this property, yeah. so you're going to have more noise than you have now, no matter what. But and this is what it is. It's like it's frustrating to know that. It, to me, everybody's being biased. 
Well, no, well, I, I just feel like I don't want to be I'm going to be respectful to you, but you keep on saying something's going to nothing. We're not talking about something else. We're talking about Mrs. Smith. Right. Plan right, right. Here. But Mrs. So Harris, I will I will give you my impression as a board member who yeah. needs to vote on this matter. Okay. And I need to vote on this matter. And what you need to hear is my opinion as a person who has the obligation to the town to make a very difficult decision. This is not a decision I take lightly. I will share with my fellow board members. And really, the meeting is between us as board members who are charged with the decision for the town. And when I hear some of the comments, my impression as a decision maker is that the impression is that we don't want any noise in our backyard and it sounds like you'd like this to end up being conservation land and that's no. not going to happen no no because we <laughs> yes. have that's not true but that's my impression mr. so when you mr. say norman, that i understand that but mr norman myself and everybody that's spoken here have said as long as there's no noise mr marco said the same thing so, and I understand that you have, as a decision maker, we also have the right to, to challenge it mm -hmm. because I cannot join a committee and then say that I can do whatever personal, I hope that it's not personal and it's really, my concern is, for what I've seen so far, that it's not unbiased. That you're not really hearing us out because everything that we said, instead of sinking it in, I would disagree notes, with that strongly. I would, uh, no, what is our bias? I understand. When you say bias, it makes it sound because as if we have a preference for one person over another. I don't mean to, to argue or, or be the Well, you just used the word unbiased, and we're going to have a reaction to that. You're telling me several times throughout the meeting something's going to go there. And we already know that, or that it's okay because he's going to clean it. And those are not really anything. And this is why I guess I pay a lawyer so he can keep it cooler better than me. But it is frustrating to hear the board uh, uh, that I understand you have to have all the facts. From moment one that we have come to this meeting, it's all about the cleanup. It's all about, it's not taking consideration. We are registered voters and taxpayers, so we also have rights like everybody else is talking about here. So we really <coughs> would like for you guys to take in consideration, not just the noise of the grinder, take in consideration the other, make sure that the noise studies, you do it happen. How many trucks are coming in there? We don't even know. Are, are they all going to have the silences? And then hopefully there's more <coughs> than just... It's good for the town. Okay, Ms. Carras, you may not agree with our decision, if, if, or my decision. I have no idea what the rest of the board's decision is going to be. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to make a decision. And, and if you don't like that decision, you will have the right to appeal it. That's, you know, that's the process. Well, I also think that we've given a lot of time. And we've made a lot of concessions. And we've made a lot of concessions. And I think the applicant's done the same. So we're listening to everybody, and we've given the public a lot of time in this meeting to speak with us and to air their concerns. And we are concerned with all those things. Noise is an issue for us, too, as citizens here in Pembroke as well. But there will be noise somewhere with any use of that land. It cannot be absolutely eliminated. And quite frankly, living on a, a road as busy as Route 53 the ambient noise there alone, because of the traffic, will exist long into the future. So there are noise issues, but there's noise issues that we can't do anything about. I mean, there are, there are gas trucks at the Shell station at 5 a.m. I drive by, you know, just sitting there running. So uh, there's, there's stuff going on. Well, it's a business district. Yeah. I just want to say that <coughs> Donald Mount called 416 Washington Street. Um, I live on the busy street, and you go in the front yard, and you can hear the traffic. Blah, 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 blah. Now, I go out in my backyard, it's like a different world. I don't hear anything. It's just animals and some talking. Mm -hmm. But now, this proposal is coming into my backyard where I don't have a choice. I, I can't have quiet. I can't have quiet in the back anymore, and I can't have quiet in the front. Mm -hmm. which, which one? I don't Mark have a choice. Which one's 416? Where are you? I don't have a choice. Okay, it's yeah. two street from us on here, but it's right here. We're on the other side of the garden. Choice. Okay. So mm -hmm. I guess my question is this. 
again, this this land here is business commercial, and this land here is business. So the only way to really preserve nothing in your backyard would be to say these people can't develop their land. I'm not saying that at all. It's not the <laughs> I well, know something is going to It's somebody's go land. Somebody owns it. Yeah. Right? But we shouldn't suffer just because you want it cleaned up. <laughs> See, I think that, that's, what's, that's what's coming across here. I, I, okay. I'm be in the middle. It's coming across here. That, okay. You know, well, he's going to clean it up, and it's going to be, that's going to be good for the town. Well, it's certainly going to increase our tax base to have taxable property. No, property-based. it's. I mean, it's well, it, well, wh wh whoever whoever owns that property is going to benefit from the cleanup. No, I think that what I was. <coughs> so, part of it. Let me try to make myself clear. Then, what I'm thinking is, and then it may be different for the other board members who can speak as well. But what I'm thinking is, okay, there's going to be a year of pain during clearing up, no matter what, and that's true if it's over 55 community. Or if it's Mr. Smith's operation. Over 55, I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but somebody's got to make this ground stable. It's not stable. And then, but I'm thinking, okay, if you had a shopping center there, it's going to be noisy all the time. If you have, I'm thinking of the different business uses that can go there. And I'm trying to ask, honestly, you know, we don't like, if you don't like this use, are you really convinced that the next use is going to be quieter? That's not necessarily mm -hmm. the problem. The problem is heavy equipment is not allowed. It's not like industrial. Okay. Well, All right. Is there a time we can continue the public hearing? Yeah. So it's almost <coughs> 9 o'clock. We've been here for almost two hours. Yeah. So we're going to continue the public hearing. I think the problem is, you know, every time we come here, something's changed. Let us come in. They change everything. I mean, well, that's, well, that's part well, of the site plan well, review it's process. It's, it's part of the process. But is that they respond to what the planning board and they hear from the abutters. Right. And they've tried to make concessions in their changes. They the haven't changed it, the site plan. The fact that it changes is good. It's for your benefit. Yeah. Like we've gotten rid of a grinder. I understand that. But you have to understand us. We don't. We just don't like the noise. I. I just. It, I just. I. You know what? I wish. I wish the guy would keep the property. That's what I. I'd like to keep it. And keep it like it is. Do yeah, but that's moment. not necessarily in. In. Not hurting me. Yeah. Can we find out from you? Matt? What? What? Get in taxes. I looked at all the concepts <laughs> on this site for the developer too, and it included a Dunkin' Donuts, a gas station, and a mall. In the same. All those things at once. Um. Actually, yeah. In one in one phase, in, in one of the Proposals. potential buyers, yeah, wanted to get all of that in and little buildings all over the place, and we pretty much shot that down as uh, something that probably wouldn't be approved. But each one came in individually as well. Um, so high volume traffic, noise, diesel, definitely with the the uh, Dunkin' Donuts and gas station proposal, and then also a, a strip mall <coughs> was also one of the other potential developments here that we had looked at. Okay. I'm, I'm sensing that I'm about to lose the other members of the planning mm. board, and you guys don't have any questions of the applicant or the engineer? No. Nobody? Okay, so Matthew, when can we continue this hearing to? Yeah, do you want to... Time on the 12th? Do as we have time on the 12th? No, we really don't. What um, do we have on the 12th? Let me, can I see the agenda? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I was going to say for the... Um, for the 30-day extension of revision, should we do that now or? or well, I mean, first we, I want to see the agenda for the 12th. Can I see the agenda for the 12th, Matthew? What do you have on the 12th? Okay, 7th, 8th, 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 
I mean, just speaking for me, my experience having done this, instead of trying to shift all those people, some of them have already waited a while. We I think we're just much better off oh. just pushing. I was going to say, we could may, may I request It's only been, I mean, it hasn't been that long since, yeah. since, uh, sort of since this was originally received anyway. I mean, it's yeah. a 60 day. Yeah, but you know. I understand. It will be enough time for uh, Mr. Watsky also to review all of the documents and the letter and be able to respond. Um, and I know that. I don't think there's much new information. No, the letter that it was the grinding operation and the new letter that he, I know that he responded in. And if you have we read. I told him last week. I told him on last Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. The there's, conversation there's been plenty of time to review all there's of this. There's been plenty of time. We, I don't. We were going to ask that the public portion of the hearing be closed. We have no problem with your extension. We're not going to submit any new information. And I don't think they're going to hear anything new from anybody about anything because you flushed it all out. So the hearing on 230 Water Street. That's a public hearing? That's a public yeah, hearing at 230 yeah. Water Street. Yeah. Um, oh. We have to Do, we are have we going to need 45 to. minutes for that? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think so. so. You think yeah. so? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we have an <coughs> informal, and then we have conditions for Russell Field and Oak Street. And then we have uh, just oh. a sign protector wire signing a building permit. Yeah, that's a comp that's a complicated. I mean, that's that's going to be a well. That's a uh, well the major modification the minor modification that we agreed to years ago. Um, right after that site plan was approved. But that's not a public hearing. Again, no. is there any reason why that couldn't be moved to the twenty sixth? I don't think. I mean, that's a. We yeah, that, well, I, I would say we can move that to the 26th. Yeah. They waited, what, five or six years right. to, yeah. to, to do it? <laughs> what I'd like to do is say we continue this to 745 on the 12th and move Russell Field back and then move the others to the 26th. Okay, so, would, um, so moved. Matthew. And that's a date certain, which would be February 12th at what date, what time? 745. Oh, 745. February 12th? Second. Second. Yeah. Oh, the 12th. The 12th. 12th at 745. Okay. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we're going to continue the public hearing to 745 on the 12th? Yeah. Uh, and we're continuing so that you can have time to read these new letters that we just submitted. We want to read all of the letters. Will that happen again at the next hearing that we get letters at the last minute that you guys will need to read again? That one <laughs> well, the fair, so the fair right. thing is everybody submitted letters at the last minute on both sides. Yeah. I think ours so. was in response. Too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But, but, um, and we've we've had a lot of back and forth here tonight. I'm not sure a lot's going to change between now and the 12th that we don't already know. Um, I agree. Just so. Um, well, I'd like to I'd like to look at the letters. I mean, we haven't seen all of the letters and everything. They're in the public file. You are welcome to come get them at any time. Well, yeah. So I would like to read them. So if I wanted to say well, you, something about them, you can come to the planning I'll board and sit down problem. with Matt and take a look at the file if you'd like. I'll be happy to I show. Know. I'll be happy to show. And I remember the public. But I will, but if all you, of the materials, you see, all the documents, a, they're all in the public file. Have a public meeting. No, we are having a public hearing. Okay. We're continue. We're not closing the public hearing. Okay. The public hearing is not only have we not reached a decision. Well, somebody said that. Well, we haven't closed the public hearing. The public hearing has been continued to 7:45 okay. on February 12th, okay. which is next Monday night. That's correct. So next Monday night at 7:45, this will be a somewhat shorter meeting because we will only have probably between 7:45 and 8:30 for a public hearing. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the public hearing, we'll make a decision about whether we need to extend further or whether we are ready to reach a decision and then vote conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so 745 on the 12th will be the public hearing for um, 346 Washington Street.